Do you want to know how you can use the ZDF path in Photoshop? Let me show you this today. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Aga and I'm a CG artist. And on this channel, we explore techniques and tools that will help you become a better artist. Today, I will show you how to use the ZDepth path in Photoshop. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, so you are sure you won't miss any future tutorials. Okay, let's jump straight to 3ds Max. This scene is a part of our advanced visualization training. If you want to check it out, I will put the link in the corner. First thing we need to do is to add ZDepth render element. Let me start interactive rendering so you see what's going on. Here we can preview it. Now we have to set up two values, minimum Z and max Z. Let's start from the max value. When we set it up to 200 meters, for example, it means that everything 200 meters from the camera and feather will be black. The rest will be gradient from white, close to the camera, to black. The minimum value, on the other hand, controls what is white. If it's set to zero, nothing is fully white. The gradient starts from the camera position. If we set it up to 50 meters, for example, everything till 50 meters from the camera will be white. Then we'll have a gradient from 50 meters to 200 meters, and finally everything further than 200 meters from the camera will be black. I like to set it so the gradient is nice and soft like this. We don't need too much information in the background. Now let's jump to Photoshop. I have my render here as well as the volumetrics and ZDF render elements. To have something on the volumetrics best, you will first need to add fog. In the corner, I will put the link to the tutorial where I show how to do it. Firstly, let me show you one trick. We can modify the ZDF layer even after it's rendered. I will add the level adjustment. Click here so this adjustment works only on the layer beneath. By changing the middle point, we can make it brighter or darker, depending on the needs. I will make it a bit darker. We'll be using the ZDF render element to make selections. To make a selection, go to channels and click on the RGB channel holding the control key on your keyboard. I will create a new layer and fill it with color to show you how it works. I will do the same with the mask though. Now let's invert the mask to have the color in the background. We can use it if we want to have the effect only in the background of the image. We can do it with, for example, this volumetric pass. First, let's change the blending mode to screen. Now we just have to add the mask so the effect is visible only in the background. We can also create a solid color layer and apply the same mask. Let's adjust the color. Of course, we need to lower the opacity as well. It's a quick way to imitate the fog in the image. I think it's better to use normal fog and eventually use it on top. Now I will show you how to add the depth to the image. We will add the contrast to the foreground and remove it from the background. Select the background, add brightness and contrast adjustment, and 
decrease contrast. Then select the mask and add curves this time. Invert the mask to have the foreground selected. Add contrast. Let me show you before and after. It's much more visible if we desaturate the image. We can make some further adjustments now. We can do the same thing with saturation. Let's desaturate the background a bit. Then let's add a bit of vibrance to the foreground. So how do you like this trick? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you found this tutorial useful and you would like to learn more advanced techniques like this, I'd like to invite you to check out our advanced exterior visualization training, where we teach advanced uh, techniques of creating materials, creating different nature scenarios, creating different seasons, uh, using post-production to add atmosphere, setting up the camera according to the composition rules, uh, using fog and volumetrics, creating different lighting scenarios, using forest pack and rail clone, editing plants in grow effects, and much, much more. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye-bye!